Hello everyone, this is a guy and welcome back to another episode of Fun Day Sunday and this is like the sixth or seventh time I'm trying to record this. I've just been having issues and we are in probably not my most favorite tier 10 cruiser. We're in the Mosfa and the Mosfa, it's a strong ship, don't get me wrong. She's a very strong ship and very scary, especially when you're trying to run away from two of them in a Henry IV and they just burn you down. Ah, uh, Clan Wars. Uh, we are joined with Dread in the Shimekaze and ANC in the Yamato. Predominantly a fairly light tier 10 battle. Uh, for the most case, the enemy team has two tier 10 uh, DDs, uh, while we only have the one. Now the Mosfa, well, as may many of you may know, I'm not an overly big fan of her. Um... But she did get a buff, and it's actually, I actually haven't tried her since she got that buff, which was the 50 millimeters of plating that she recently got. And she is a little bit different uh, than her lower tier, which required running and gunning. Uh, the Mosfa is more of a let's find a good place and camp, because she has a very, very weak side, and that does mean uh, she can't really deal with it. So... Mosfa really does like that. Um, she's not very stealthy either. 13.7 <laughs> kilometers on the detect. And so she really can't be very, very stealthy. But she does have that nice long radar. And that's one thing that's going for her uh, is that radar. Now, she's also a fast cruiser, uh, which I think a lot of people kind of forget. She's actually, I believe, the second fastest cruiser in the game. I might be wrong. I know it's very close with the Zhao. Obviously, the Henry IV is the fastest with the speed boost. So, fairly fast cruiser, and she's actually very, very tanky. And as you will be seeing, I'm doing the normal standard style of playing with the Mosfa, of kind of hunkering down and sitting there. Now, we do unfortunately have a Masashi. This Masashi really does not like me. Uh, he's going to be firing at us a lot. Uh, did get our one of our guns knocked out, which is... Eh, it's not the end of the world, but it does definitely hinder our progress. Now, I don't exactly know what this buffalo thought he was doing. Uh, we are playing standard, um, which means there's obviously no caps for him to try to assist his DDs, but uh, he really has it in his head that he needs to push forward. And the buffalo, I mean, granted, is the tier 9 USN cruiser, uh, very similar to the Des Moines, but... As you can see, this buffalo is just getting focused down left and right, and we actually earn first blood. Now the HE is decent, uh, decent side, decent hitting. Uh, it does hold uh, the second largest caliber besides, obviously, like the Stalingrad. I'm just taking account of the main line. Um, so she does have very hard hitting shells, as this Cleveland does witness as we do get a Citadel. Uh, definitely, definitely can use uh, those AP against even broadside uh, battleships and can deal with quite a significant amount of damage. Now the major issue is she's not much of an island camper. She does have to at least be in an area where she can actually get her guns to bear. And you do have to be very, very careful of the sides because they are very, very squishy. Very squishy. I, lo I love citadeling Mosfas in my Henry IV. Love doing that all the time. Uh, enemy team has already lost two of their uh, USN cruisers, so definitely a lot less radar. And now we have an Alsace. Now the Alsace I'm actually not concerned about because the Alsace actually has Tirpitz and Bismarck caliber guns. Granted, they have a lot of them. And granted, this uh, Alsace decides to fire HE. Um, still not a major concern for me, uh, if I'm to be perfectly frank. Do get a fire on that all sauce, and this is just kind of what the Mosfa is good at. She's just really good at hunkering down and being in a really good position. And at times, it can be uh, very frustrating, uh, especially if you're dealing with Mosfa. A hunkered down at Mosfa can take a lot of damage. Uh, can ricochet, can even break HE shells, shatter shells. Um, so. A good Mosfa player, this is kind of the position you want to be at. And against destroyers, it's absolutely terrifying because the range on the radar is 
massive, 11.7 kilometers. The radar doesn't last as long as the USN cruisers, so there is a major downside of that. Uh, the guns don't reload that quickly, but they hit pretty hard, as the Chengmu just uh, experienced there. Uh, did almost 5,000 right there on that uh, salvo and caught him on fire. Uh, but for the most part, this is just kind of what the uh, Mosfa does. It's just, it's really good at kind of hunkering down. The Mosfa also can run uh, Hydro, but usually in instance of randoms, having the defensive AA is far superior uh, because it's AAs, uh, pretty decent. Now the Mosfa obviously is going to have a bigger sister here soon, as soon as Clan Wars is over with, which is the Stalingrad, which I'm I'm interested in getting. I don't know how much I'm going to be playing be playing of it because it is a essentially a bigger version, uh, almost a essentially a battle cruiser, uh, and but it's it's predominantly the same style of gameplay. Which, once again, the Mosfa is a good cruiser. Uh, it's just, it's not my most favorite. I've had uh, issues with her in the past. But anyway, let, let's let let bygones be bygones. So, whenever dealing with a Mosfa, there's a few ways you can deal with it. Um, one is torps. If you have a destroyer that is gutsy, it can torp the Mosfa. The other way is pretty much going to be focusing it down with HE. It will take a while. And if you are close enough and if you uh, have decent sized shells, using your AP against the superstructure is actually a really good fantastical way to deal a fairly decent amount of damage. But eventually, yes, the superstructure will be get, uh, become null and void because the damage uh, that was there is no longer applicable. Now this Otago, keep an eye on this Otago, he's going to be the major pain in my keister uh, later on, and AP against a broadside target generally will mean uh, citadels, let's see if we can actually get one, I don't think we will, but also it looks like the Chung move uh, finally decided to drop torps on us again, uh, but generally whenever dealing with Mosfa, you don't want to show a lot of broadside because its AP can hurt uh, quite a bit. Now our, our team is fairly even. We're ahead one ship. We've lost the majority of our destroyers, but so has the enemy team. And Cleveland is going to be, well, should be an easy target for the Mosfa, even with just HE because the Cleveland does have much thinner armor uh, than what the Mosfa has. But there's always the fire chance, but the Mosfa has a decent fire chance, especially if you do have a demolition expert as well as any additional flags, so you can always use that for your benefit. But I just, eh, may, my, probably one thing I do definitely miss about, say, the Donskoy is it actually had torps. Uh, the Mosfa does not, obviously. Uh, which would be a little little powerful because then you can't really rush a Mosfa uh, as much as you could do with a, say, a Dmitry Jonskoy or, well, a Minotaur. I almost said Des Moines there for a second, but yeah, you really don't want to be showing a lot of broadside uh, whenever possible, but with Cleveland, well, whenever you fire at a Cleveland, you never get the Citadels, but whenever you show broadsides as a Cleveland, you always get Citadel. That's, yeah, that usually happens. Uh, but this 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 Cleveland is uh, going to go down one way or another. We're going to switch over to HE and just focus him down. Now, fortunately, we are actually being assisted by our friendly Seattle, uh, which is actually kind of nice because it definitely does help uh, focusing down uh, this Cleveland. Now, at the moment, uh, there's not too much to worry about. We still have to worry about that Chung Mu. And that Otago is still going to be around to pester us, but this Cleveland is going to go down uh, relatively quickly. Can we get the kill number two? Eh, yeah. unfortunately we don't, but decent amount of damage, and oh my word, hello deep water torpedoes. Oh, that was very, very close. Somehow we actually managed to get away without taking any torps, which is very nice because unfortunately for myself, I'm actually very low on heals. Uh, which is not good. 
not good to say the very least, but now we get to witness how the Mosfa deals with the Yamato. For the most part, Yamato can overpin. Uh, Yamato has the overpin mechanic uh, that is normally equated with uh, what it is to be a Yamato. Uh, but for the most part, if played right, you can generally just out uh, damage Yamato uh, because you can ricochet shells from a enemy Yamato and oh there's that pesky pesky Otago who is just doing a downright good job being quite a bit of annoyance and still not getting that Citadel on that Otago because you do have to keep in mind that is a Japanese cruiser and for the most part um, well generally you will uh, Citadel the enemy uh, Japanese cruisers Pop a radar, last radar available. Chungmu is spotted. Deal almost two and a half thousand points of damage. Chungmu is very, very low in health. Do you have to be careful of any torpedoes? But it looks like ANC does take the initiative and does focus down that Chungmu. So the enemy team doesn't have any more destroyers. We still have Dread and his Shimakaze. And unfortunately for us, we have attracted the attention of the Yamato. And once again, the Mosfa, as you can see there, can ricochet shells from a Yamato. And it can focus down a Yamato uh, with H with its HE, and it does look like Yamato did rep its fire. Uh, but generally, when that happens, for whatever reason, RG just just does not like you and says no more fires for you. And there are those Chungmu torps, and fortunately, not going to eat one, which is actually very fantastic. But do have to be careful because there is still an Otago left alive and he has a real, real liking for us. Um, and I am careful, I'm trying to be careful just in case he tries to get around our broadside because that's generally what you want to do. I think had this Otago kept quiet and got further along my broadside, he probably could have focused me down. But instead he opens up with the HE Salvo and instead gets uh, lit aflame by the enemy, by the friendly Seattle and myself. Uh, but unfortunately for us, the Seattle is pushing away from that Otago and it's not going to be any more use for us. Now as far as damage, not not too bad. 121,000, we've tanked almost 2.3 million uh, damage right now. And that's kind of what the Mosfa is really good at. It's just, it can tank a lot of damage. Um, and that's generally the main play style of the Mosfa. Um, it is very scary, especially in later game, in late game, because of its potential firepower. Uh, so generally, taking out a enemy Mosfa early in the game is extremely beneficial. Uh, definitely ensures you can deal a lot of damage. Do manage to somehow actually knock out the enemy. Otago's uh, rudder there, which is actually very, very interesting. And unfortunately, we have just lost Dread, which was our only destroyer uh, left alive. But the enemy team is is actually putting up a fight. Uh, once again, this is one thing I do definitely like about uh, World of Warships is, uh, especially if both teams are fairly competent, it's it's actually a very, very fun battle. Um, it's not particularly fun whenever dealing with a steamrolling uh, situation, being steamrolled or uh, steamrolling the enemy team. But in this instance, it's 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 generally fun. It really comes down to positioning tactics, who gets the better shot. RNG even plays a big factor. Not saying that World of Tanks or any other game will have this. Uh, but I have seen, for instance, World of Tanks generally will somehow one player will take out eight or nine enemy tanks. World of Warships, eh, not so much. <laughs> generally, generally will not work like that. Uh, very, very rarely have I ever seen a single ship manage to take out the entirety of the enemy team. So it's not very, very common. Now we're finally undetected uh, from the enemy Otago. He finally managed to pull back. Once again, I think had the Otago um, stayed quiet because it has a much better detect than the Mosfa. Like it could have easily stayed quiet, get along my broadside, and probably uh, focus me down. Now I am taking a risk because I do switch my attention over to the enemy Boyne. 
uh, and still don't manage to get a citadel, which is just lovely. Um, but right here is a very dangerous position because I'm showing a lot of broadside to the enemy Otago, and the enemy Otago does have 203s, which can deal a lot of amount of damage. And speak of the devil, there is the enemy Otago opening up. Uh, does look like he's actually focusing RC Adel. I do turn on towards the more prominent threat, which is the enemy Yamato. Uh, but right now, the Otago has a, actually a fairly good broadside on me. Uh, so he definitely could use that for his benefit, but he does go invisible because, well, it's just a matter of fact, he is currently dealing with two ships, and that's not always what you want to deal with. You generally want a unfair fight uh, whenever playing World of Warships. So back to the whole position of tanking, uh, keeping my bow in towards this enemy Yamato. And it's, I, I will have to say, it's not particularly exciting. This is generally what the Mosva does. But it's it's going to pick up, especially here at close to the near end. And look at that. Uh, ANC actually managed to do a devastating strike on the enemy Wooster. Uh, completely annihilates him. The enemy team is down to only three ships. And once again, we become the target of the enemy Otago. Does get a fire on us. I do switch my attention to him because at the moment he is going to be more of a major threat. Uh, this Yamato is still firing at us. Uh, we should hopefully minimize the amount of damage. Do go quiet. And this is where it's a bit sketchy. I am currently sitting on 2,551 points of health. Uh, once again, the enemy Otago, it, it just has a much better detect than the Mosfo. But the Otago, all it has to really do is land a good HE salvo, and the Japanese is very well known for its HE salvo. Enemy Yamato finally goes down, uh, one ship left alive on the enemy team. But one nice thing about the uh, Mosfo is its belt, its armor. As you saw there, we only took, I think, about 500, maybe 500. 40 some points of damage, something like that. And we're still kicking. This uh, Togo is sitting at 7,000 points of health. Uh, I'm actually trying to wiggle uh, while reversing, which is very, very difficult because you generally aren't very, very fast. Uh, do get a good HE salvo on the enemy Togo. Once again, he goes invisible. All that stuff down the enemy team is a lonely Musashi. Uh, Musashi actually manages to take out our North Carolina, but I'm more concerned about this situation right now. Uh, this, uh, like I said, this enemy in Togo, all it has to do is land one good HE Savo on me. And look at that, ANC does get Kraken, uh, taking out the enemy Yamato. And all that's left on the enemy team is this Otago. Opens up again. The only downside about the Otago is its gun placement is not the best. Do switch over to AP. And finally, we finally get our Citadel and take out the enemy Otago while surviving with 2,000 points of health. And that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zaijin.